Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, our Lord and our Father. Thank you, the everlasting King. Father, we have come again to come to listen to your word, to receive your word, and also to receive the grace to do what you have come to tell us tonight. Mighty Jesus, you are a great God. We have come to you that you may show mercy also, Lord. So we ask for mercy and the forgiveness of our sins. Wash us, Lord, with thy most precious blood. Father, you are the one who have told us to ask. And when we ask that we shall receive, Father, we have come to ask for mercy tonight. We have come to ask that you wash us clean with your most precious blood. That your blood be upon your children tonight. Wash us clean. Upon every word that shall come from the mouth of your son, whom you have chosen to minister tonight, by your grace, we ask that you put, you cover, you shield every word from his mouth with your blood. And let the purpose of this word being spoken tonight be accomplished, mighty Jesus. And so, Father, we hand him over to you. We hand over the message to you. We hand over the fellowship to you. We hand over every family, every soul that is here tonight, that is listening to this message. Father, all are handed over to you. That your hands may be upon each and every one of your children. And so, Father, we give you glory. We thank you for what we know you have done already tonight. And so, have your way, Lord Jesus. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We cover the message with the blood of Jesus. And we decree that no weapon formed against us shall stand. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. May your glory come down and be with us tonight. May your angels be here to carry this message to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, and amen, and amen. My dear people of God, it is with great pleasure in my heart that I welcome every one of us to the hearts of Jesus and Mary Ministries. And today, we shall be taking a look in the scripture. And we are taking our reading from Hebrew chapter 11, verse 5. Hebrew chapter 11, verse 5. I am reading from the New Revised the Standard Version Catholic Edition. By faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death. And he was not found because God had taken him. For it was attested before he was taken away that he had pleased God. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus. Father, 
we ask you to speak to us. We ask you to digest this scripture. Bring it down to the level that your children would understand the very reason why you have taken us to this scripture. Now let this scripture enlighten us and uh, transform us so that what it says becomes what our life don't have to be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, tonight's message is titled Walking with God. And this is volume two. If you have missed the volume one, I will kindly encourage you to check the YouTube channel of the House of Jesus and Mary Ministries and type Walking with God. Or simply, you can go to YouTube and type Walking with God by Brother Owakwe Chuku. In Volume 1 of the message, the focus was on a man called Enoch. We find his reference in the scripture in Genesis chapter 5, verse 18 to 24. And just for the sake of those who may not have listened to the volume 1, who may not be here with us that day, or rather to so refresh our minds, let me just make a quick reference that Enoch was a holy man. A man that the Bible tells us vividly in Genesis 5 24 that he walked with God. He walked with God. He walked with God. He set his mind on God. And nothing pleased him other than the things of God. He set his affection on, on the things of God. The Bible tells us in Colossians 3 verse 2, Set your mind, okay, above, on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. The man, Enoch, had become a reference point for us today as a man who uh, set his mind, okay, on things that are above. And we know that when people set their things, their lives, their minds above, that is, towards God, then they think of God. They they want to do what pleases God. They want to do what the Bible says. They want to hear from God. They want to go on their knees to pray. The only thing that pleases such people is things of God, things of the Spirit. Okay? Their ways can never be discerned or be understood by men of the world, by people of the world, by by those who are not spiritually un, um, educated, you know, they, they usually misunderstand those who focus their minds above. Now, Enoch lived his life focusing his mind totally on God. And God so much loved him to the point that he rewarded him with heaven, but not through death. He was raptured to heaven. God took him, body and soul, to heaven. Now, in today's reading, it's also about Enoch. But take note that today's reading came from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, right? Which is a New Testament. And you see... The New Testament, the, the New Testament that is in Hebrew eleven verse five, talking about Enoch again, ratifying what is the Old Testament of Genesis chapter five verse eighteen to twenty four says about Enoch. Now make this comparison. 
In Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, the Bible says that Enoch walked with God. That is Genesis 5, verse 24. Now, in the Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, the Bible now says that the ways of Enoch pleased God. Now, if we put the two together, we see a statement that goes this way. That Enoch walked with God and his ways pleased him. His ways pleased God. This is my desire. And this is the desire of every, every true child of God. This is your desire that God shall be pleased with us. That God shall be pleased with us. Now, Enoch was not the only person that walked with God, but also find that God was very pleased with him, to the point that God rewarded him with a rapture to heaven. He didn't die. And this is not my story. That's what the Bible tells us. Hebrews 11, verse 5 tells us that by faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death. So he did not experience death. Now, my dear people of God, today, the Holy Spirit draws our attention to the faith, the faith of Enoch. The faith of Enoch. All right? In the last time, it was a general perspective of Enoch walking with God. And please, let me repeat myself again. If you miss that message, please, please go and replay it and listen to it. Very important. Now, today, we're focusing on the faith of Enoch. It's very important for us to understand that this man, Enoch, we're talking about, uh, was a man like us. He was born. Had parents. All right. He had a family. He he, he was working. Had to take care of his family. So he 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 wasn't born in a different uh, world. It is this world. But God was so pleased with him that his life talks to us tonight. His life talks to us tonight. Now every day we come to this prayer line, it is a walk with God. It's also a sign that we love God, because if we don't love God, we cannot come here to seek, to listen to him, to another. The other day, the psalmist was saying, the moment I heard, let us go to the house of the Lord, I was filled with joy. Why? Because the things of God was pleasing him so much. The only thing he wanted was things of God. So, but, but there's something the Bible talks today in Hebrews 5 that is, that, that our attention should go to. That is, the faith of Enoch. You see, the Bible said, by faith, by faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death. Now, in, um, in Hebrews chapter 11, in that chapter, completely in the whole of the chapter, you see men of faith. You know, God giving us opportunity to see men and uh, women of faith. People like Abraham uh, and, uh, and Isaac and Elijah and all that. So you, you see such men of faith there. Okay? This was where Enoch was mentioned 
his name made it to the rule of rule of faith or rule of fame, and um, he, he he pleased God so much. So we have to ask God to help us to please Him, to do what glorifies Him, because if we please God, then God will bless us. We are now in the season of fasting. And we're asking God, help me to please you. Let this fasting please you. Let me please you in everything I do. In my prayers, Lord, let me please you. When I'm going out of the house, when I'm going to work, when I'm coming back, let me please you. When I'm coming into the prayer line, let me please you. Such simple prayer is very powerful. Enoch, so much pleased God. That was a great testimony. That was his testimony. In fact, the Bible says that before his translation, that before he, he was taken to heaven, he had this testimony. What was the testimony? That he pleased God. It was attested that he pleased God. What a great testimony. That even today, we are reflecting, encouraged by the life, the testimony of a man like us. Now, but let it be clear to us that when we walk by faith, like Enoch, we are placed in the mind of God. Okay? And uh, we are placing all of our trust in Him. And seek to honor him by obeying his word. And doing those things that please him. That was the way, the life, the testimony of Enoch. And we must make sure that in this character of Enoch, that will find God talking to us in his life. Prompting us to do what he did. That is, pleasing God. In Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, the Bible says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Any time a child of God is walking by sight, it is no more faith. It is no more faith. But when you are walking by faith, you throw sight behind. A lot of ways St. Paul puts it in Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. And then he begins to talk about the, uh, the momentary troubles of this world, that the glory ahead will always supersede that. And then he tells us that the, 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 the things we see, the visible things of this world, are passing away. They are temporarily. They are temporarily. They don't have lasting value. But he says that the things that are unseen are eternal. Okay? And so he encourages us to fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Because what is seen is temporary. Now, When we walk by faith, we are saying that 
we are fixing our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. That is faith. We are, get, we are in the season of fasting. We have things we are believing God for. We have faith that as we are presenting them to God, that God is taking note, that God is working out the miracle, that God is visiting us at a point of need, that God is doing something about it that we're not praying to ourselves or to the air around us, but we're praying to God that we don't see with our eyes, but we know with the eyes of the Spirit, the eyes of faith, that He is right there with us. That He is right there with us. Right? Now, when we walk by faith and not by sight, we no longer rely on our judgment. We no longer put things under our own custody or in our own hands, but we put them in the hands of God and we have faith that God is doing something about it. We no longer do what we want to do or go where we want to go. But we ask ourselves, this thing I want to do, this place I want to go, does it glorify God? If God cannot be proud of me or pleased with me if I go there, then I will not go there. Walking by faith. It's all about Jesus. It's not about our dreams. It's not about our heart desires. It's about the will of God. Jesus only tells us in Gethsemane, Father, let your will be done, not mine. Walking by faith. Even when Jesus was in Gethsemane, and it appeared that heaven was quite silent, and he wanted his father to come down and take away the bitter cup, and his father was silent, Jesus didn't lose faith in his father. He said, well, let your will be done. Knowing fully well by that statement that the father's will is supreme and is perfect, cannot make mistakes. Jesus had complete faith in his father. Faith that his father will not fail him. Imagine all that Jesus went through in the station of the cross. Imagine all that he went through. Imagine the judgment, the betrayal, the calumny, the crucifixion, the tears, the flogging or scourging. Imagine all that. Imagine the, all that he went through and his father was silent. Hmm. If Jesus did not have faith in his father, you think he would have got, gone through all those things without, without abandoning that pain? But because he had faith in his father, he did not bulge. His dreams were his father's. His hard desires are that of his father's. We are called in this fasting to walk on the shoes of Enoch. <laughs> to walk on the shoes of Enoch. Or to walk on the path that pleases God. To walk with God. To walk or to make a, a work that is a complete reliance on God. And if things do not go the way we expected, like Jesus will say, Father, let your will be done. Because we know that in the journey of faith, we don't judge based on the outcome of things. You can pray for rain to fall so that your farm 
may grow. The seeds you planted is found to grow. But God may not even send the rain. He may send the sunshine. But we understand that the ways of God are different from ours. And that whatever thing he does is correct. He is perfect. Even if it doesn't make sense to us. Even if it doesn't make sense to us. Imagine when Jesus was at the tomb of Lazarus praying. Imagine when he was there. In that prayer of Jesus, at the burial site of Lazarus, you find the prayer of a man of faith. A man of faith. <laughs> and when Jesus came there, is it, is it Jesus praying? A prayer that shows someone who was sure that his father would do something. In fact, that his father, his father had already done it. The prayer of Jesus that was recorded by the Bible was for you and I to even know what he prayed. He already prayed in his mind. And he knew that his father would never abandon his prayer. Amen? <laughs> and so, in John chapter 11... Verse 41 to 42, then you see Jesus praying under the tomb of Lazarus, saying, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine coming to prayer and saying, God, thank you, for I know that you have answered me. This is a faith at another level. Claiming victory based on the promises of God that God will not fail. That is a Christianity at another level. Claiming victory before the testimony is faith at another level. Now this friend of mine he married before me, but God began to bless me with children before him. And he remained that situation for, I'm trying to remember how many years, but um, um, I know it was, it should be uh, uh, between 13 to 15 years. Okay. Uh, about 15 years, more or less. Now, but he, he had no child. But there was a vision that the Lord showed many years ago where the wife gave birth to children. The wife had children. This was many years ago. Now, He built a house and uh, he had a room for the boys and another room for the girls. Decorated the rooms, put baby stuff there, clothes in the, uh, in the closet. The only thing that was missing there were the children, but other things you can think of in a house that the children should have, they were all there. And people were asking him, <laughs> my friend, what's your problem? Well, you, you, have, you have room for your children? Boys, room for boys, room for girls? He said, yeah, because they are coming. 
I'm talking about about, two, two, about 15 years. Now, the Lord now bless him. He called me one day. I said, brother, oh, so you see, keep this number because, you know, a lot of contact. We talked and talked. I said, are you, where are you calling from? He said, I'm calling from the United States. Well, what did you come, come to the United States to do? He said, we have come for the birth of a child. My wife is pregnant. So they came to the U.S. to deliver the baby. And this was just uh, three years ago. And I was talking with him last year. And he said, oh, I'm not sure if I told you that uh, my wife put the bed. I said, oh, yes, I, you told me that uh, when you came to the U.S. To... He said, no, 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 no. My wife, my wife had a, uh, God bless her, with twins after that one. I said, what? He said, yeah, God bless her with twins. The promise of God has been fulfilled. But you see, he had rooms for the boys and for the girls. Thanking God before you even have the testimony at hand is not for baby Christians. All right? Now you see Jesus praying. This is a very serious matter. A man that was there for four days, he was decaying. But Jesus was thanking his father for hearing him. What is the prayer of Jesus to the father? That Lazarus may come back to life. And he was thanking his father for answering him that Lazarus will come back to life. Imagine if Jesus were making a kind of prayer in our time. What do you think CNN would do? Or what they would say? They would call him names. They would recommend him for psychiatric evaluation. They would say all sorts of things. Even in the time of Jesus, he came to life to the family of Jairus, whose daughter was dead, and he would say, oh, she's, she's repeat. Ha, 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 ha. They laughed at him. And they said, okay, 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 okay. You are trying to tell us that we don't know the difference between sleep and death. Is that what they're telling us, Jesus? He didn't want to start going back and forth with them with words. He just told them, uh, please, if you can give away, let's, let me have uh, the parents around me here. And Jesus proved them wrong. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Prayer of faith. Prayer of faith. Verse 42 of John 11, he, Jesus continued his prayer saying, I knew that you always hear me. Can you imagine that? Listen, listen, listen. I knew that you always hear me. Hey. Do you see faith? But I say this for the benefit of those who are standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Case closed. The next is miracle. The Father had to do it. Amen. <laughs> Jesus. That is walking by faith. The other day, Jesus was hungry. He needed the food. Then he saw this fig tree. And he came to pluck some fruits to eat. But there were, there were no fruits. And so he cursed it. By the evening of the next day, the disciples took note that, oh, Master, the tree you caused yesterday is it, dead. It, 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 it has withered. 
Jesus was not surprised, but the disciples were surprised. But you see what just told them? Some translations of the Bible says, if you have faith, you can move mountain, right? But Some of the translations really captured what Jesus meant. The, you know, in the course of translation of the word to English, some of them lose their their uh, their quality. Their, their uh, they, they become you know watered a little bit. Some of them even get so much watered, but they. The, the actual thing that Jesus actually said to the disciples is that if you have God kind of faith, you will do this. In fact, you can even command the mountain to move where you move. If you have God kind of faith. Not the water the version that says if you have faith, you can do this. It's actually if you have God kind of faith, you can do this kind of thing. God kind of faith is a type that caused the fig tree to dry up. Meanwhile, this fig tree that Jesus wanted to eat from was not even its season for fruiting. It was somebody going to expect an apple tree to carry some apples when it was not in the season. Again, the world will say, why don't you take this man for a psychiatric evaluation? They say, if his mind is right. You see, the ways of the world will always be in contradiction with the things of faith or the things of the spirit. If you have God kind of faith, extraordinary things, mind-blowing miracles will happen. There are miracles that when you hear it, you know that only God can do this. There's no other way to explain it. Even doubting Thomas would believe it. <laughs> like the, the testimony of a man who whose leg was amputated, but he had so much devotion to our blessed mother. So even with the amputated leg, he was still going to the Maran shrine every day. In fact, because he was amputated from a very poor family, so he was always, you know, begging. So he turned to a baker because of it. Nobody could employ him. No good treatment. But when he goes to the Maran shrine, he would ask Mama, please heal me. Of course, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. He was expecting the legs to grow back. But I think he was more interested in the wounds. Because where, where the thing was amputated, it was a fresh a fresh uh, saw. A fresh saw. So he would take some oil and the Maran shrine and drop on the saw. Can you imagine? Even as I'm talking about it, it's not easy to talk about it really. So he was even having hope that through this oil, this open wound will be healed. They will still carry it and go into Maran Shrine. Until one day, he was in the dream. He was sleeping the night and was in the dream. And in the dream, he was in the church. And he was doing what he knew what, how to do it. And that was going to the Maran Shrine, taking the oil, dropping on the wounds. And that, this was what he was doing in the dream. When Merina met him there in the dream, I said, okay, I've come to fix your legs. And now did a miracle that her le his legs now came back. Now, this was a dream. Now, as uh, the mother came into the room, the mother saw somebody with two legs. Of course, that could have been the son. So her interpretation was that uh, the son had a friend, a military guy, um, a young military officer, that occasionally comes to the house to stay with them. So, you know, you know she thought, okay, that was his friend that came. But, but when did he come? And uh, why would he not tell anybody he came? He just came into the house. And, but where is our son? Because the person he saw, he, she saw was somebody having two legs on the bed. 
This was the mother seeing this miracle. Nobody knew it was a miracle. Now, of course, the this, this son covered himself in the bed. That is even something that made it more, more, more uh, ridiculous. Went and called the husband. Come on, I'll, come and help me to see this. When did the, um, the friend of our son come? I mean, he's on the bed. The man came. So, uh, who, who didn't know where he came? And then went ahead to wake, to wake him up, like, you know, and they saw the son coming back, jumped from bed. It was the moment he, that, the, that moment he was, the, the, the leg was fixed in the dream, and he jumped up and was rejoicing in the dream that the father was touching him and was jumping up. Jumping out of the bed and looking at his legs. You see, this kind of miracle can only be believed when, in the world we are today, they can only be believed when people see it. Yet, it does not even make them to doubt the presence of Jesus. They still want to find a way to explain it, you know, maybe, maybe something happened and uh, it came back. The world will never like to give Jesus the credit. My dear people of God, if the world hears that Enoch was taken, <laughs> woo, taking life to heaven, they will look at you as <laughs> this person doesn't know what I'm talking about. See, today I preach, and I hear people telling me to my face, they said, This Bible you are preaching is written by a man. The, all those things are just stories, nothing is true. That is the spirit of the world. We know that everything in the Bible is correct. Enoch was a man that lived on earth and he was carried to heaven as the Bible says it. But the world will never believe it. But I pray that God gives you a miracle. It is this kind of miracle that you see or you experience that even those who are doubting Thomas, we know that some, this, this, is, this, is, this is really something else. I mean, there's no way to explain this. Like when the son was dancing at uh, Fatima, right? When our lady came to Fatima. So many people, even it is, doubting Thomas is believed because they saw the son. So that kind of mind blowing miracle would break down the mountain or the wall of unbelief. So, the fact that the world does not believe the things of faith, they also know that when they encounter mind-blowing miracles, then they believe. And I pray that God will give us in this very fasting and prayer a mind-blowing miracle. One single miracle that people will hear it will say, not true, unless I see this man talk about it. <laughs> Somebody knows that you have you have one eye, and uh, and uh, all of a sudden there's a testimony that the other eye had grown back, and your friend is far away saying, "No, no, no, God cannot do this. I don't believe it unless I see it." And the person comes to you and sees it. You see, that person will believe that God is real. And I'm praying for somebody tonight that God uses this fasting season. To give miracles to his children. Mind blowing miracles. Miracles that cannot be explained by science. That no wisdom or logic would be able to explain it. May God give us such a miracle this season. May God Give us such a miracles in the name of Jesus. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Father, we ask for such grade of miracles. Bless your people with such miracles. Is this not your your ministry? You told me years back that I, I should always remind you that this is your ministry. Not that you don't know, 
But you have told me to always remind you. So, Father, I remind you. We know you do not forget. Your word in Isaiah 43, verse 26 says, Bring it to my remembrance. <laughs> that I may prove you innocent. So, Father, I bring it to your remembrance. That you told me that I should always bring it to your remembrance. That this is your, mira- your ministry. So, Father, is this not your ministry? Were you not the one who brought this ministry from heaven to earth? Father, if you are the one, as I know and I'm convinced about it, and as you have revealed to me, I therefore ask you, Lord, load your people with the benefits, with mind-blowing miracles, in this season of fasting and prayers of your children. Father, say to your people, Oh, Jesus. Father, show up. Load your people with blessings. Load your people with favor, with grace. Father, Load your people with blessings. We need you, Jesus. Can somebody talk to the Lord now? Can you talk to him now? Let him load you with blessings. The Bible says in Psalm 68 verse 19, Praise be to the Lord, our God, the God of our salvation, who daily bears our bodies. He daily bears our bodies. He carries us in his arms. He's our salvation. We ask him to load us with his benefits. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. Ask him not to pass you by. In this fasting. Oh, Jesus. Ask him not to pass you by with this fasting. Let this fasting be a moment. A moment of divine visitation. The Lord daily loaded us with benefits. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Aha. Talk to him now. There is nothing that God cannot do. There is just nothing he cannot do. Things you think cannot be possible for God, they are all possible. Talk to him. Divine visitation tonight. Divine visitation in this fasting and prayer. We ask for the grace to rely on him. Jesus. Bring true happiness to your children. Bring fulfillment in life to your children. Increase our faith in you, Lord. In the course of this fasting, may our faith in you grow. We know in Hebrews 11 verse 6, it is impossible to please you without faith. Enoch was a man of faith. He pleased you so much. Father, may we be men and women of faith. Help us to live by faith. Your word says that that the just shall live by faith. Enoch was a just man. and He lived his life by faith. So was Joseph. Father, help us. Talk to him now. The grace to live by faith. For without faith, Hebrew 11 6 says, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Oh, Jesus. 
walking by faith means living life in light of God. Oh. Father, help us to live our lives in your light. To walk in your light. In the name of Jesus. To believe whatever the Bible says. Even if human beings disbelieve it. Even if the whole world have conflict with it. Father, give us the faith to believe whatever thing you say. Help us to choose righteousness over sin. No matter the cost. Help us to trust you in every circumstance. No matter the cost. Even if people reject us. Even if they think we need the psychological evaluation. Father, whatever they have branded us, we know that on account of faith, That you will reward us. Oh Jesus. Help us to believe Lord. That you are working out. Great miracles for your children. That you are. Packaging a great reward. For those who seek you. Regardless of. What people are saying. Father, help us to work consistently, consistently with you. Not half an, half an on or off on or off uh, faith, type of faith. No, no, no. We want to have consistent faith. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Look at, the, look at Enoch. Enoch, the Bible says, in Genesis 5, 21 to 23, that Enoch walked with God 300 years. We're not talking of the years before the count. The count was started when Enoch was 65 years. Okay, If you look at Genesis 5, 21, see that Enoch, Enoch lived 65 years. When he begot Methuselah, his son, and he began, he, he, and then, uh, uh, from that point, three hundred years from that point, to, okay, was his season of walking with God. Three hundred years of faithfulness, three hundred years of pleasing God. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? 300 years. I don't even know what happened in his life before the account started. But I think the Bible tells us that, that, that Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. And then, after the birth of Methuselah, he now walked with God 300 years. So, whichever way he has spent his first 65 years on earth, is not of, of interest. It's not an issue of discussion. The fact is that he ended well. <laughs> no matter the past of a child of God, the moment we give our lives to Christ, fully coming back to him, not one leg in the world and one leg in the church, completely immersed in him. The Bible says we will become a new creation. The Lord will grace us. He rebrands us. We become new. Old things are passed away. Enoch walked in intimacy with God for 300 years. That's a very strong statement. For 300 years. Hell. Those days, those Ancient time, people were living very long life. Very long life.
300 years of faithfulness, of intimacy with God. That is what I desire. That is what we need. And that we pray. Lord Jesus, help me to walk in intimacy with you. Oh, Jesus. Help me, Lord, to walk in intimacy, intimacy, intimacy. Yes, I've been walking with you on and off. But now, Father, I desire an intimacy. I desire an intimacy. Yes. In implanting me the DNA of Enoch. That, that thing that made him to focus on you so much that you were pleased with him. Father, that is my desire. That is our desire. Talk to him. Talk to him. Intimacy. The level we are getting to in the ministry this year, the ministry is, is, is heading to a higher level. If you don't know, know it now. So you better key into the frequency of the ministry. This is our 10th year, our jubilee year. And the, 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 the plane is ascending. We are ascending. The vehicle of the ministry is ascending. If we key into it, we are sent with the ministry. We are sent with the grace of the ministry. And I'm asking God for everybody, everybody to ascend with the ministry to the place that God is taking us to. If you read the book of Psalms, some, some places you see a place written, the Psalm of Ascent. Have you seen that in your Bible a couple of times? Take note of that. We don't usually read that part of the Bible. It's usually at like the introduction of the of the of the psalm. Psalm of ascent. It's a psalm that lifts the heart of the people, the hearts of God's people up to God. An invitation to look up to the hill, to look up to the Lord. The psalm of ascent. And now this is our season of ascent for the ministry. That the Lord is inclining us to arise. That in this tenth year, the Lord is blessing us with His spiritual ascent, ascent, climbing higher, taking us higher, ascending. It is for those who are intimate with the Lord, and you are part of them. Talk to Him. Talk to him. Let this vehicle not pass me by. The vehicle of ascent. The vehicle of jubilee. The jubilee vehicle. Hell, Jesus. Talk to him. Talk to him. Jesus. The level that the Lord is taking us to is practical Christianity. Preaching. Visible character of Christ. Not coming to church dressing like an angel on Monday to Saturday the person becomes something else. That's wrong. But being consistent. Being consistent. Not the hypocrisy. What we preach, we should we should leave it. Leave it. Anything short of this is hypocrisy. And it's not where God is taking us to. This is not a miracle of hypocrisy. No. Jesus is taking us higher in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is a great reformer. He's a reforming all of us. Reforming the ministry. And those who are not members, let God drop them. Let God drop them. You see, let me tell you something. We want member doesn't mean that we want those that God does not give, bless us with. There are people that God says they are not part of this ministry. They are supposed to be in another ministry. My prayer is that they will go to that ministry and be blessed. That's the place you'll be. If that place is not a, your altar of blessing, you will not get the blessings. Am I happy to see you here? Yes. But 
if this place not where the altar of your blessings is, I pray this day, this January, this beginning of the year, that God will take you to the altar where you belong to. And members that are other places, that the altar is here, I'm also praying as the one that God has called into this ministry to stand a gap for you, that the Lord will send a wind that will blow them to their altar of testimonies in the name of Jesus. The Lord is going to shake things up through this prayer. Aye, aye. The Lord is going to shake things up through this fasting. Where we are going to is so important. So important. You see this this tag, my jubilee. Have you ever thought of it? Have you ever thought of it? In the ancient Israel, the slaves are the jubilee year they were set free. Those who were owing people, no matter how much, are the during the jubilee year they will be all their debts will be forgiven. So everyone look forward to. The Jubilee year. A year of joy. A year of celebration. So, oh, so I'm no more a slave. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm no more a slave to Satan. Where God is taking us to is not ordinary. We are praying for the grace to get there. We are praying for the grace. That the power of God will carry us high. That everybody in the family will go high. That our spiritual life will ascend. Our prayer life will ascend. Our righteousness will be more visible than ever. That the light of God in us will be more visible than ever. In the name of Jesus. That every day we shall surrender to Jesus. Make a recommitment to him. St. Paul will say in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 21, I die daily. I die daily. That is surrendering himself to Christ every day. If I allow himself to be crucified on the merits of Christ daily. Oh, Jesus. Let me tell you, that's a choice. What I'm talking about this night is a choice. A choice. It's of everybody. But for true members of this ministry, it's a choice. A choice to surrender to Jesus daily this year. A choice to grow in intimacy with God. A choice. Enoch made his own choice. Today we're celebrating him. Who knows tomorrow when you'll be celebrated because of the choice you're making today. Because of the choice you are making this year. Hmm. Life is choice. Christianity is a choice. Choice to follow Jesus. That is what it is. Talk to him. Talk to him. Choice. Lord, help me to make this choice. To follow you consistently. Continuously. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help me to bear good fruits for your kingdom this year. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. To bear good fruits this year. This year. This year. Help me to bear good fruits. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Morning, day, and night. Father, may I bear good fruits. Pray that prayer, pray that prayer. This is not a time to ask, I want to get married, I want to have promotion. This is a time to pray for the most important thing. What Matthew 6, verse 33 tells us, if we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, every other thing will be added unto us. So now we seek his righteousness. A year to seek the righteousness of God. Talk to him. Oh, Jesus. Show Jesus a year to seek your righteousness. A year, that is this year. I want to be a, a righteous man. I want to live 
as a righteous man. I want to live the life that Enoch lived in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Yes. The kingdom of God should be taken very seriously in this ministry. It should be taken very seriously in our lives. In the name of Jesus. If we are going to party this year, we dress like children of God. We dress like people of God. That someone will see us and say, Aha, this one is a child of God. There must be a demarcation between the way the world dresses and the way that the children of God dresses. There must be difference. Jesus himself tells us that, Look, we cannot afford to compromise our faith. We, we, we cannot afford... To, to yield to the patterns of the world. In Genesis 1 verse 4, he divided the, 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 the light from darkness, and darkness had its own domain, and light has its own domain. When light and darkness begin to have a handshake, something is wrong. When a child of God begins to have a handshake with the pattern of the world, something is wrong. Something is wrong. If my life, my character, my dressing, my, my work cannot define Christ, something is wrong with me. That's what I'm talking about. But this year we are ascending, ascending, ascending. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Talk to him, talk to him. Let, let the Lord get into our hearts. And give us a heart that will hate sin. Hate what we have become used to that we don't know it is wrong. Sometimes we do certain things and we don't know it is wrong. I'm also talking about myself too. We don't know that it is wrong. They will keep doing it. We don't know it is wrong. Is God talking to somebody tonight? Somebody, for example, may find it very awkward to dress indecently, as we have found common in ladies these days. But the first time, the person knows that thing is wrong. But, you know, peer pressure, friends, you know, influence of uh, guys. Okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong about it. And then you wear it. Then you begin to think there's nothing wrong about it. Before what's happening, it is not normal. That you're not graduate at that dangerous level. I don't want to talk about that at just level. But you know what I'm talking about. At that point, we are now hardened. We are now insensitive to the error. But as a ministry, God is talking to us. And the Father, on this subject, take control, Lord. Take control. Talk to your people. Let this message begin to resonate in our hearts, even the dreams, even as we're waking up, even as we're dressing, even as we're getting to go out. Let it begin to resonate in our hearts, Lord. Help us to do the right thing, Lord. To do what you would want us to do. Things that will please you. This year is a year of pleasing you, not pleasing ourselves. Father, many times we have pleased ourselves for so many years. It's a time to please you, Lord. Help us. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Even if it means to change friends, help us, Lord. You are taking us somewhere higher this night, this year, O oh God. Romans 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, of peace, and of joy in the Holy Ghost. Father, that badge, that identity, is what we desire as a ministry. Yes. Yes. Have your way, Jesus. Talk to us, Jesus. Use us to talk to the world. Use us to evangelize the world. Use us as your modern day missionaries. This is our prayer, Lord Jesus. Are you going to abandon this prayer? We are praying your mind, Jesus. Because this is the type of prayer you want. We're not even asking you to, to give us personal things that are personal to us. We're not asking you to help us to do what you want. 
Father, we are convinced that you will do something. You are helping us. You are, you are transforming us. You are breaking the cords, the chains, the yokes that are tying us to the world. Let them be broken in the name of Jesus. Yes. That this year, I will carry my cross. Yes, I will carry my cross. Eh? I will carry my cross daily this year. Christ calls us to pick up our crosses daily. And I carry mine daily. Yes, this year, that's what I would do. Hmm. This is a matter of making this decision now and uh, sitting back, dropping it. No, we are steadfast. The grace to be steadfast has been given to us. Daily, we are called to make choices and decide whether we will Keep following Christ and do things according to his will and way or do things without him and do them on our own way. Mm. We must not do it our own way. There's this song that says, I did it my own way. But you know Enoch's song? The song of Enoch was, I did it God's way. <laughs> I did it God's way. Woo! Jesus. Father, we thank you for this message tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank him, thank him. If Enoch could live and walk with God by faith in the midst of his sinful generation, we likewise should be able to follow his example because the human race is the same and God is the same. Enoch's faith was evidenced and validated by God. Evidenced and validated by God. His, his faith. May God Evidence our own faith and also validate our own faith. Yes, Lord. Hell, I say, no, we not see death. May we not see spiritual death in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. May may our life stand as testimony that God. Is real. Of course, Hebrew 11 5 tells us that Enoch's life was a testimony. Enoch's life and his words stood as a testimony or a clear witness for God before a corrupt and vile world. What a man of God! What a man of God! Enoch was not conformed. To the world of his time. Never. Enoch was not controlled by the world of his time. Never. <laughs> we have to stand out in the midst of the world. We have to stand out. Father, have your way tonight. Have your way, Jesus. It is a shame that every day the church is becoming like the world. The world that the church was supposed to change the world, but now the world is not changing the church, and the church is not patterned after the world. Am I the only one seeing this? The church is becoming more like the world. So, oh. Jesus. Jesus. Father, help us. Do not allow us to, to be a crooked generation. Do not allow us to be part of a crooked and perverse generation. Do not allow us to become part and parcel of this wicked and crooked generation. But let us shine our light in this world. God's desire is that through our walking with Him as 
the children of God we might be in the words of Philippians 2 by 15 without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom we shine as a light in the world. Hell, Jesus. Jesus. Help us, Lord, to stand strong. The, the validity of our faith is evidenced by our work. So let us work. Let us work. In this fasting, let us work to the glory of God. Let us work. Let us also talk about Jesus. Our work and talk go hand in hand. Our work and the evangelism go hand in hand. One of the evidences that our faith is real is a desire to keep the, the commandments and also the desire to share our faith. These are indices of, you know, of a, of a practical Christianity. If there is no desire to do what God says, one might, not, might have good reason to question where they are in their relationship with God. Yes. If there's no, de no desire to do what God says, no desire, one might have a good reason to question where they are in their relationship with God. If on the other hand, you have a deep burning desire to work with God like Enoch and to live according to his will like Enoch and work with him like Enoch and strive to demonstrate that in our daily lives that we will follow him and our life will be a testimony of him like Enoch, then we are men of faith at that point. And may God bless us this night and keep us on the path of holiness. And may this message never stand against us on the door of judgment. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. And amen. We cover ourselves, brother of Jesus, and we decree that no weapon formed or designed against us shall prosper. And these are many more we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was the beginning, is now never shall be well without an amen. Cover this message, of Jesus. Amen.